there's a few basics that we'll need to cut a profile with your saw blade. In this example, I'm going to make a simple threshold type of shape out of Tusia material. We'll start with the geometries. We'll need a cross section of the profile, and then we'll need a piece of geometry for it to follow. It's also nice to have a material blank, which is what I'm going to start with by drawing a rectangle to represent it. I'm also going to use a rectangle to draw a cross-cut section of the profile that I want to cut. This rectangle represents a cross-cut section of my material blank. And now I'll draw in the profile I want to cut into it, which in this case is a line at an angle. You can draw it here, or you can import it in if it's already drawn. I'm going to turn on Show Breaks to show that this geometry is not joined. This line is really the only thing that I need, because it's the only thing that I'm going to cut, so it shouldn't be joined to anything. And the last thing I need is a piece of geometry for my profile to follow. Since I've drawn my crosscut of my profile the same width as my material blank, I can just offset an edge of my material blank if I know the distance. My profile will be referenced from this point, so I need to know the distance from that point to the edge. This is the distance that I'll offset the edge of my material blank in. By choosing Offset, setting that distance, offsetting a line or arc as geometry to this inside. And next, I'll add tool direction to my follow geometry and my profile geometry by going to the Machine tab to select it. I'll start with my profile geometry. I want the blade to stay on the top side of it and to work from the top down. So that would be the left side, and I'll choose Reverse and No before I select that line to get the arrow to go from the top down. Now the top of this profile line is going to follow our geometry line. I'm going to use my current selection and select this line so that the arrow is at what appears to be the front because that's where I want my profile to be. And now with tool direction set on my two needed pieces of geometry, I'm going to convert my material blank that I've drawn into a material that I can use for simulation by going to my 3D tab and selecting Set Material. And then as prompted, I'll select the geometry and Finish, and then enter the material thickness of 2CM into the Material Top field. And then I'll choose Delete Original Geometry before I say OK, followed by a Finish. And next, I'm going to lengthen the ends of my follow line, because that's where my blade is going to plunge, and I prefer to lead in from the edge. I'll go to a front view to draw in the example. I'm going to use a 14-inch diameter blade to cut my Tusia material. If I extended my lines 4 inches, I would clear my material with the blade comfortably. So I'm going to extend both ends of my follow line by at least 4 inches. And I'll use Extend by Distance from the Edit tab to do so. I'll set my value to 4, and then I'll choose both ends of the line to be extended. And now, with the geometry properly prepared, we can apply our toolpaths. We'll start with selecting the blade. Choose your Park Industries Machine tab to see if you have a Select Blade for Profiling button available. You can use this to choose the blade by first making sure it's the active blade or selected under Tool Select, and then just click that button to select the blade. And if you don't have the Select Blade for Profile button, the best way is to Go to Tool Select and again make sure your blade is selected as active. I'm going to use a smaller 14 inch blade for profiling. And then with the proper blade selected, close a window. And then we can make the blade fully active 
by using it in a cut. The easiest cut to make being blade cut by two points. When you choose it, ensure that the proper blade is selected, and then off to the side, click two points, the distance between them long enough to make a saw blade cut. And as normal, you'll see that cut in the operations panel. Now I'll just undo that cut since I know the blade was used. Now to apply this blade profile cut, I'll go to the machine tab and choose cut shape. In this first tab, I'll select profile as the type of cut, and I'll leave selected checked. Under the general tab, I'll verify that the correct blade is selected. I'll use tool center for compensation and straight on the corners. Under levels and cuts, the first two fields are referring to the distance between the table and the bottom of the blade. I'll set my rapid level to two inches, my rapid down to one inch, and the material top is 2CM or 0.787. When making this profile type of cut, the max error is the step over, and the max depth per cut is the step down. I usually set these to the same values. Today, I'm going to set them both at 0.15, which is a little wider than the thickness of my blade. And as shown, this can eliminate blade deflection and is a great way to make a roughing cut. There's nothing to set or change in our machining data. We don't want to use lead in or outs. And you can adjust any tool settings before we click OK to apply the cut. I am first prompted to pick the side profile, which is this line that we've prepared. And I'm going to pick this end to be its reference point that will follow the line that we offset earlier, which is also the shape that we're being prompted to cut. So I'll select it and finish to apply the cut path. And if we go to an isometric view, we can see that the cuts follow the profile that we selected. We'll also see that if we run it in simulation. If you don't have a simulation tab available in your project manager, go to your view tab, click on show project manager, and then select solid simulation from the drop down menu. If you're satisfied with how simulation ran, you can close it and then go to your machine toolbar to send G code to your machine. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.